My name is Sonu Khandelwal. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco. In this video, we are going to talk about the Remote Leaf Back-to-Back -back Connected Link feature. This feature is going to come in ACI 521 release. Before we go and do a deep dive about what this new feature is, let's take a look at the architecture of Remote Leaf. So as part of this solution, what you do is you put a pair of Remote Leaf at a remote location, and those Remote Leaf are completely discovered managed and operated from a central location and that's where your APIC controller and spines are located. The traffic forwarding happens locally from the remote leaf whether it is to a different remote location or to the main data center and you can connect the different type of virtualization environment for example VMware, uh, for example Kubernetes, for example Microsoft Hyper-V or bare metal or services device or even routers so you can you can use these remote leaf exactly in the same fashion as you do a local leaf this architecture enables a lot of use cases for example you may have a use cases for a satellite data center or a mini pop location or 5g distributed data center and in those use cases the location the remote location is really small you only need to put a pair of remote leaf switches over there. What you can do is you can manage all those remote location and multiples of them from the main data center and the APIC controller, which are sitting in the main data center, manage all of these remote locations. You may also have a use cases regarding the extension or the migration of your data center. And what you do in those cases is you build a L2, L3 connectivity using remote leaf, and then you can use that to migrate your workload across remote location and main data center. And you may also have a use cases for the disaster recovery. And the reason why we have put a star over there is because remote leave provides you a redundancy in terms of the control plane and data plane. So essentially your traffic forwarding will continue to work if you lose a connection to the main data center. But of course, when you lose the connection from the main data center, the remote leave cannot be provisioned and you cannot see the stats or you cannot operate those remote leave, but the traffic forwarding works just fine. So if that's your disaster recovery situation and that's the disaster recovery that you like, then you can use the remote leaf for the disaster recovery as well. But then we recommend to have a full fabric for the disaster recovery. Let's take a look at how the traffic forwarding happens with VPC attached host. So when you have a VPC attached host, what will happen is the control plane of the VPC would sync the endpoint information across both of these leaves. So what will happen because of that is when the packet comes from one endpoint, it will be locally forwarded from the same remote leaf without having to go to the upstream router. But then if let's say the remote leaf not connected back to back and the host is not connected by using VPC, what will happen is the only network connectivity to the remote leaf is via the upstream router. Because of that, what will happen is a lot of traffic will go to the upstream router and this will happen. This non VPC connectivity is very common when your hosts are connected by using SRIOB for the faster data plane because those hosts does not support VPC. So in those cases, there's a lot of traffic that can go to the upstream router. And if you want to save that bandwidth and you want to keep the traffic local to the remote leaf itself, then you can use the back to back connected link. And that's what this feature is going to do, what we are supporting in ACI 521. So as part of this feature, what we do is you connect your fabric links between the two remote leaf. So this is something that we did not support for the regular local leaf or for the main data center, but this use case is more about the remote leaf. Now connect these remote leaf back to back and just like the fabric links get discovered automatically, just like the fabric links gets provisioned automatically, the same thing will happen in this case as well. So you will have an automatic discovery, automatic provisioning for these remote links. You don't have to do anything. And the traffic forwarding between the two endpoints, which are connected via non vpc it will happen over these links. And just to look at it in the contrast before 521 and after 521, before 521, the back to back connected link, whether those are in the same EPG or a different EPG or a different bridge domain, the traffic will go to the upstream router if it is a non VPC host. But if it is a VPC host after 521 and you have these back to back connected links, all the traffic is going to go over these back to back links. Now, what this also gives you is let's say the back to back connected link fails. No problem. The traffic can go over the upstream router and be forwarded. If you look at how the traffic will go to the main data center, of course, it's a local forwarding from the remote leaf. But then what we can achieve with the back to back link is let's say the upstream router goes down. 
Now what can happen is the traffic can go over to its peer router over the back to back link and from there it can get forwarded. So that's a huge benefit in terms of if you're looking at building more redundancy to the upstream router, you know, this back to back connected link can actually help you. Then the supported topologies are only with the VPC. So you need to have the remote leaf as part of the VPC domain for this feature. What would not be supported is, for example, there are two remote leaf. Those are part of the VPC domain, but you connect the other remote leaf, let's say a remote leaf three and connect it with the RL2 or RL1 in a back-to-back -back connected fashion. That's not going to be supported. Or let's say you have remote leaf one and remote leaf two, and you have not configured that as part of the VPC domain, the back to back connected link will not come up and will not work. Now you might ask, can I use this feature for a non RL, right? So let's say I have a full fabric. I want to connect my local leaves or a regular leaf with the back to back connection. No, that's not going to be supported. And one of the main reason for that is in a full fabric, most of the time the traffic is either local to the leaf itself or it is going across the fabric using the spine. So at that point in time, we don't see there's a huge value in supporting this kind of a topology. So this is not going to be supported. So with that, this was the feature all about. Thank you very much for watching this video.